I'm voting yes for you. I'm voting yes for the future and for my children too. Yes, I'm voting yes for justice for my people and their right. I'm voting yes for Scotland where we can be a shining light. The people all around this world who are yearning to be free. I'm voting yes for Scotland. I'm voting yes for you and me. Yes, I'm voting yes for Scotland. Yes, I'm voting yes for you. I'm voting yes for the future. I trust that you will too. Oh, you better. I bet you will too. Otherwise you'll be stuck with it. Tories and the bedroom tax and trident. All that shite. But forever. Unless you're going to do what I do. Because I'm voting yes for Plus. Scotland. Yes, I'm voting yes for Woo! you. And for the children too. Yes, I'm voting yes for justice for my people and their rights. Yes, I'm voting yes for Scotland. Cause we can be a shining light. Yes, I'm voting yes for Scotland. I'm voting yes for you. Yes, I'm voting yes for the future. And for the children too. Voting yes for Scotland from Mullapool and Wick. Let's go and already yes, voting yes will do the trick. Voting yes will do the trick, yeah you better. Voting yes will do the trick. <laughs> the question is, do you agree that Scotland should be an independent country? For me, the principle that we work best when we work together. Well, he didn't. Very serious. The referendum. It seems to me that they're not dealing with the issues. Hello, and welcome to the Scottish Independence Podcast. This is a special episode just to commemorate, I suppose, the march and rally that was in Edinburgh on Saturday. For those of you who went there, I hope it will be a nice little memory of what was going on. And for those of you who, like me, who were not fortunate enough to be able to go, it will help to give a little feeling of what went on. And there's some quite inspiring speeches. I've put some music through it, some things from the crowd as well. So I hope you enjoy it. The first thing was the introduction with uh, Hardeep Singh Kohli, which moves into Elaine C. Smith. Hi, how you doing? I'm Navid from Still Game. <laughs> You're a bunch of bastards. He's my little brother. I will make a living off taking his credit whenever I can. Welcome Scotland! Yay! Um, I know it's been a tough year for us. You know, last year there was about 10,000 people. This year it's dwindled to what the police think might be 30,000. So really... Yay! So many people are going to have to hold some down on Carlton Hill. It wasn't the first time I've been held down. On <laughs> oh. Thank you very much for coming. Um, just so that we're clear, this isn't about creating a nation. This is about restoring a great nation back to where it was. <laughs> Those flags you hold are older than... Um, any of the policies we've suffered under for a long time, and uh, I mostly mean the policy that I'm openly defying today, which is too many colours. So thank you <laughs> for allowing a wee fat brown boy from Bishop Briggs to speak his mind. Um, it's amazing to be here and uh, hugely humbling. I was speaking to a pal of mine who is um, one of the undecided, one of the waverers this morning. She sent me a text. She said, shall I come up? Will there be speeches? Will I, will I learn things that will help me make a decision? And I said, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, she showed up and I just bumped into her around the corner. She said it was very emotional coming up the hill, which it was. I can't think of another time in my life where there'd be such a spread of people of different ages. And Sharon was telling me about a granddad that was explaining to his three-year-old about how we were once a nation in our own right. And uh, astonishingly, that three-year-old understood it more than most MPs in Westminster. So we still have a superior education system. 
and thank you for coming today. Thank you Aberdeen, thank you Melrose, thank you Kirk and Tillich, and thank you even Lindsay. Let's even <laughs> thank Lindsay for too many dental practices and corner shops. Let's hear it for Lindsay. Often overlooked. Uh, and I know there's been a big contingent come in from the Highlands and Islands, so... Hello, how are you? Um, and don't worry, everything's open in Edinburgh tomorrow. You'll be fine. <laughs> now, um, my job initially is to introduce uh, the main host for today. Um, I've been trying, I've been struggling with the best introduction for a woman that I've always known. All of my life I've known her to be a brilliant Scot, a passionate Scot, a talented Scot. So I asked her before coming out, how best... Oh, Penanda to the Welsh! Yeah. Penanda is Welsh for Penanda. Deal with it. Um, <laughs> is it I don't understand the fucking word they're saying. <laughs> but thank you for coming. Um, I, I said to her, I said, how do you want me to introduce you? I'm, I'm going to say fucking again because I want to see the signing for it is. <laughs> Have you seen what the signing for bullshit is? Do bullshit. Bullshit's great. You'll be hearing a lot of bullshit from me and something about aubergines and, and the big end on a diesel engine. Fucking hell, we even the best sign language people in the world. So, sorry. Um, so our host for today, um, she describes herself as the Beyonce Knowles of Scotland. I describe her as the amazing Alexi Smith. Hello. Well, what a sight this is. Absolutely brilliant on this wonderful day, this special place. And the good news is actually, that there are so many people on the march that they're still coming in and they, some of them won't be able to get on the hill. Isn't that fantastic? Well, know that they can't get on the hill, but you know what I mean? Right. What a day, what a sight you are. My name is Elaine C. Smith. I'm a member of the advisory board of the Yes campaign. I'm chair of the Scottish Independence Convention and I'm the MC uh, along with Hardeep here today. And it's my job to welcome each and every one of you to this almost wholly symbolic place, Calton Hill. Yeah! I'd also like to say here and now that I'm here as an individual. I am not representing any political party. The Yes campaign is made up of many different parties, groups, individuals, and they're all represented here today. Yes Scotland is not just the SNP. Did you hear that in the media? Did you hear that? Yeah! It's not just the SNP. I know that the media and the commentators are going to portray this movement as being some sort of front so that they can marginalise or diminish the campaign, but it's not true. However, I want to say here and now a massive thank you to the SNP and all those campaigners out there today, as well as many who sadly have not lived long enough to see this day, who have worked for decades to bring us to this place. special place in our history where we as a nation will vote on our future and we'll take the time to debate, to discuss, envision the type of country that we want to live in, the type of country that we want for our children and our grandchildren. Now as the great Scottish writer Peter Arnott, is, and I know he's in the crowd somewhere today, he said a brilliant phrase actually, that Scotland is basically an argument. Well, I like that. I love a good argument. And you know why I like it? Because it shows we still care enough. Yeah. We still care enough to argue, to tackle difficult subjects, to embrace ideas and creativity, to engage our brains into thinking about more than simply how much something costs. Yeah. Is it just me? Yeah. Is it just me? I don't think it is, but 
I feel we now live in a country in the UK that appears to know the cost of everything and the value of nothing. Yes, we like a good argument and why not? From the ancient clans right through to devolution, we have debated our future as a nation. And those arguments will continue. And all Scots are going to be asked to join that debate. And then, as another great writer, Alistair Gray, said, we will be living in the first days of a better nation. Now, this might be unpopular at a yes rally. I would like to say, I don't doubt the sincerity of those in the no camp, not the new camp, the no camp, <laughs> no the football stadium, they're very sincere. Anyway, in the no camp are those who have yet to make up their minds, so there's a lot of people here today who don't know us, and welcome to all of you. We are all Scots, no matter where you started out, be it Ireland, India, Pakistan, Poland, Somalia or England, if you live and work and contribute and love this yes. country, then for me you are a Scot. Yes. And I, I'm not a, I'm not a was like as kind of Scot either, you know. I, I do enjoy a glass and I have a tear in my eyes singing my own folk occasionally as well, but I don't think actually as Scots that we are better than any other nation. We're not. But what I do know for certain is we are every bit as good as any other nation and we have the right to determine and control our future as much as anybody else. Supporting yes doesn't make you more Scottish than someone in the no camp. They are every bit as proud of their roots, their ancestry, and I don't doubt that we have a common bond. And that common bond is we all want to make this place better. We have to make this country better. Where we differ is how we think we can achieve that. And I don't believe, and I've not for over 20 years now, that Westminster can or will ever deliver for the people who need it the most, and I include people across the whole of these islands. What we have with independence is a chance. We've got a chance to create a real democratic parliament with full powers, a written constitution, where sovereignty lies with the people of Scotland. Yeah. Chance to make this place better. Now, there are some who believe there's no need for change. If you live in a really affluent area, you've got a good job, drive a couple of nice cars, a good pension, a wee holiday home in Mallorca, your kids are at private school, why do you want change? Life for you is good. And I've had a lot of those advantages in my own life. But surely, and I think we are like this as Scots, surely our lives have to be more about our own personal comfort and gain. Is your life not made worse by knowing that half a mile away there are people living in abject poverty through no fault of their own, with no hope, no future and no dreams of a better life? I live, I live in the east end of Glasgow. I live in the posh bit, the scum with money bit, but anyway. <laughs> but I live in East End, I drive through, I'm walking through there, I'm shopping there every other day. Life expectancy for men, in the year 2013, life expectancy for men in Shettleston is 58 years of age. 58, where child poverty is estimated at one in three. After 50 years of labour and power in the city of Glasgow, yeah. and in the parliament, and in Westminster, they should hang their heads in shame. Yeah. And there's a lot of talk about vision just now. We've got to present a vision of the Scotland we want to live in, and I agree with that. But is that the vision that Labour and those who hold power see for this country? Oh. More of the same? Is that what the No campaign think is good enough? 
Oh, and of course, we've had all the stuff trying to scare us to death over the past months. The tsunami of negativity in the media and the press. Project fear. Well, I'll tell you what the real project fear is. And that's what's coming towards us over the hill as the coalition veers more and more to the right and the massive cuts to the public service and welfare that are about to be put in place over the next year. You think it's bad now? Just wait. So far, we've only experienced...